Sabineau from the Museum of Uncut Funk. Today I'm going to make my take on tuna burgers. As you can see on my cutting board, I'm, I have some fresh scallions, I have a sweet red pepper, and some chives. I have a tuna steak that I'm going to chop up nice and fine so I can get about three burgers out of that. And I'm going to use tikka masala as my binder. So I've already started to chop my scallions and I'm going to complete this process. Now, you know, I could be putting a finer chop on the scallions, but as I've told you before, I like to taste my vegetables in the foods that I'm preparing. So I'm not going to use all of the green stem on my scallions. That's enough. I'm going to place these in my bowl. I'm going to chop up my red sweet pepper next. I'm going to cut it into four pieces. And then I'm just going to put a nice chop on those. Now you don't want to cut your peppers too thick. Kind of want to make them into nice slivers, but again, enough where you can get the taste of the sweet pepper. So I'm going to discard that in, put my sweet peppers in the bowl. So I'm going to take my chives and I'm going to put a nice chop on them. Chives, as you know, are in the onion family and they have a really nice flavor when you add them to your foods. Now your chives, you don't have to cut very thick and that should be enough. I'm going to add that to my bowl. And as you can see, I have all of my vegetables in my bowl. So I'm going to move my chives out of the way. I'm going to bring my steak in front of me. And I'm going to cut my steak into several pieces. Now there's no rhyme or reason for me how I chop my uh, tuna steak. So I'm going to move some of these pieces over. And what I like to do is just put a nice chop on the steak like this. And I'm going to continue to chop this steak until I get all of this tuna chopped, added to my vegetables, and when we come back, I will proceed to make my burgers. Hi, I'm back with my tuna burgers, and as you can see, I've added another steak to the mixture, so I'm actually trying to prepare six burgers for today. Now, I will be serving this burger on a whole wheat bun, uh, toasted. I'm going to prepare my tuna burgers on the grill. I'm going to use a cast iron skillet and uh, cook them outside today. In addition to that, I'm also going to have a tossed salad, or my version of a tossed salad, which is fresh watercress, pineapple, and a drizzle of uh, chocolate balsamic vinegar. Uh, in addition to that, I'm actually going to take my pineapple slices and grill them on the grill so I can get a nice charred uh, uh, flavor on my pineapple and mix them in my salad. So what I'm going to do now is take a heaping uh, serving spoon of tikka masala. You don't need a lot of this. And I'm actually going to add two because I do have a lot of uh, tuna in here. So I'm going to use my hands to mix this up uh, because I really don't want to break down the tuna and, and, and uh, with my spoon and um, just incorporate this with your hands, do it very gently. Now again, you can add more or less of the masala if you'd like, um, but you also want to get the flavor of the tuna and the vegetables. You don't want anything in your tuna burgers to overpower the flavor of the uh, tuna. So now that I have this all mixed, I'm going to form my burgers. So you just grab enough of the tuna, you form it into a ball, 
and then you press down on it gently. Now, if you want a bigger burger, you can make it bigger. It all depends on how many people you have company, uh, coming and how many tuna steaks you purchase. So, now what's key to this process is that you must let your tuna sit in the refrigerator and get cold. Now I'm gonna let this sit in the, the refrigerator for about four hours before I start to uh, prepare these burgers on the grill. And this way they'll form and they'll hold up in the cooking process. At least that's what we hope they do. They hold up in the cooking process. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my burgers and when we come back, we'll be ready to put them on the grill. Hi, we're outside and as you can see, I have taken my tuna burgers out of the refrigerator and they've been sitting for about four hours now. They're nice and firm and I have my skillet on the grill. You can see it's nice and piping hot. Uh, I've removed it from the coals. I'm going to put my tuna burgers on the grill, rather in the skillet, and I'm only going to put uh, three in at a time. Now the reason why I put three in at a time is so I have the ability to turn them without having them break apart. Now, okay, this is my second round of tuna burgers. I'm going to flip these. Oh, that's a nice crust on that. And now I'm going to put these back on the flame and let them cook on the other side. Now what's key is that I used a uh, virgin olive oil to cook my uh, tuna burgers in, in my cast iron skillet on the grill. Hi, I'm back. I'm getting ready to prepare my tuna burger for you. So what I've decided to do was make a little herb uh, mayonnaise. Although it's not mayonnaise, it's really Miracle Whip. I'm going to chop up some fresh parsley. Just give it a nice little rough chop. because we have fresh herbs in our tuna burger and um, we don't want to overkill with herbs. So I'm going to put that in the mayo. I'm going to add a little bit of paprika, give it some color. And I'm just going to mix this up. And I'm going to put this on my toasted wheat roll. Okay, now I have my whole wheat uh, bun here. I toasted it out on the grill. Now I've got my mayonnaise spread. And I'm going to put that on my toasted bun. I'm going to take one of my tuna burgers. I'm going to take this one right here. I'm going to place that on there. I'm going to put some more of my spread on the top of my bun. Now you know the reason why I'm not putting any lettuce or tomato or anything like that is because I really just want to enjoy the taste of the tuna burger. I don't want you know to put too many uh, added ingredients on here like lettuce, tomato, or you know baby spinach or even um, arugula. You can do that if you choose to. I just want to enjoy this tuna burger with this great whole wheat uh, uh, bun that I have, my herb mayo, and that wonderful salad that I, that I made recently. So I'm going to cut this in half. And that is my tuna burger. It is not overcooked in the inside. It is cooked just right. Some people may want their tuna burgers cooked a little bit more. 
You can always leave it on the grill for a longer period of time, but to really capture the true flavor of fresh tuna, you should not cook, overcook it because it will come out tough and it'll be too hard to chew that you really won't enjoy the tuna burger. So, I hope you enjoyed this segment. I am going to now go over and sit down and enjoy my tuna burger along with my salad and I'll see you soon.